This viewer says, I'm having difficulty uh, filling in those distant grassy hills and landscapes without trees or even without visible grass twigs. I do not see any variations in them and my painting becomes boring. When I see other artists, I find their grass areas are very attractive, but I cannot find the reason why. Can you please help? Well, let's do it. Well, one good way to go about this is not to call it grass, not to call it grassy nettles. Don't call it anything. Look for the value variations and the color variations. Now, here's the deal. Those variations in the distance are not very, they're not very obvious. They're very subtle. And it's mostly the value variations that's going to enable that interest you're talking about you need to get. Let's look just a moment at what we see in the wife in this wife painting, uh, the the Christina's world, of course, where we have all that distant stuff. And when you look at it analytically, you see lots of variation in value. Now I've got a close up down here of just a portion of, as you can see right up here, just a portion. Now see those variations. Uh, if I hold a piece of paper up next to them bring them down, you see that's a little bit lighter. It gets a tiny bit darker, and it gets a little lighter. It's a little darker, but there's something else going on there too. There's some very slight brush stroke differences there. So I want to take that down and show you um, a photo that we can work from to give you an idea of how you might go about um, practicing methods for getting those distant things up. There is no formula, but there are things to watch for. Uh, this is a photo that was taken by uh, Gary Allen Nelson, and it shows exactly what you're talking about. Distant, distant uh, hills, knolls, very subtle here, but if you look at it analytically, in this one you see some variations in the distance there, some variations of, of value and of color. Now there's this term we use in painting called alternation. That means that you're alternating what you do as you uh, move in a single direction. So um, I've got a, um, a close-up of that too that I'm going to work from and show you how you might study this. So let's just take this one away. Now here it is. Now it's easier to see when we zoom in just to that area. You can see the the little alternations that are going on. You see those little texture things. So what we need to do first of all is to come up with the colors that we're seeing and their potential values. So that's, um, I've got on set on the palette here, I've got some, uh, a um, dark, darkest dark, middle and light. Uh, this is the Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red, but it's really a red orange. And this is uh, Ultramarine Blue. And, and I've got those set up in three value areas. So what I'll need to do now is to alter these so that I can come up with something similar to this. I can do that by adding cadmium orange. The first thing I need to do is to find out what is the darkest value I see in that distance. What is the darkest value at all that I see in that distance? And so I can start with a middle value. And you know, I love my little test strips. So this is a perfect way of coming up with a uh, color that you need. We see that what I'm seeing in the distance there is actually lighter than that middle value. So I can begin to add a little bit of light to that. This is how to come up with the value that you're seeing. Just play with it. Play with, uh, play, observe and play. So we're looking only for value now. We're not looking for, for the color of the value yet. Just looking for the value. Let's go with another little test strip. This is nothing in the world but little strips of 3x5 cards. And let's put that there and see. 
and I squint and look that's pretty close to the value we're seeing and look at that it's very close to the color we're seeing perhaps we could get that just a little bit lighter so I'll pull that right here just a little bit lighter and then let's get another test strip wipe the palette knife off for really, really good which I did off camera all right another test strip now I lightened it a bit there we go that is really really close to that value we're seeing there though the next value down you can see it actually changes color as well and just a tiny bit darker that but but let's before we go there I almost forgot let's add just a little bit of that uh, of that yellowish tint that we see there to this get it a little bit closer to the color it's always better to, to uh, when you're when you're aiming for mixing a color that you're seeing you're observing it's better to get the value right first and then and then adjust the color adjust the hue uh, all right so now I'll turn this around and let's put just a little bit of that was uh, that was cadmium yellow deep I put in there it's a yellow orange and you see that's very very close to what we're seeing up there perhaps a little just a tiny bit on the uh, tiny bit on the bright side maybe a little bit satur more saturated than uh, this a little bit more saturated than what we're looking at so I'll just add a little bit of the blue to knock the saturation of that down and here we go so step by step figuring color out step by step but analytically according to what you see what you can call its hue what you're actually seeing happen that is always the first not well I should <laughs> I hate to say that but that is uh, if you do that as your first step see there we go that's very very close to what we're seeing there if you do that as your first step then you'll be surprised at how easily your exercise will go the next thing I want to do here is to come up with this uh, same value now if you'll notice if you squint the value of this grass the value of the green part of the grass is very close to the value of the orange part of the grass a little bit of variation in value but not a whole lot so let's do this. Let's uh, take. Let's get this. Uh, get the value first, and I'm going to do the value. Of, the value mixture in ultramarine blue, because I want to add the orange, the yellow orange to it to turn it uh, green. So let's see. I'll just use a palette knife here, and it's a little bit light, so I add a little bit more of that to a middle value to it of the ultramarine blue. I've got a little, you can see I've got a little bit of that orange in it, but that that's all right. That's not going to hurt anything. So you can do these two ways. I see I got a little paint there. Um, you can do these two ways. Yeah, that, that's close. You can you can use the palette knife for that, or you can use your uh, use the test dress for that, the way, the way that works best for you. Now I'm going to reach into the cadmium, or, uh, cadmium yellow deep, and not very much. Just take a little bit of time, and let's change that lean it more towards green that is a that green we're looking at there is a, a very low uh, intensity green it's not a bright green so that that helps to recognize that too but let's just see now are we in that yeah that's very very close very very close but you can see now the value is very very close uh, now I'm going to change I'm going to also provide for a little bit darker value of that so I'm going to bring the ultramarine blue over here first I'm going to check the value and now I'm going through lots of steps here to come up with the colors uh, color combination I need in order to make this happen but that's necessary when you're trying to figure out something necessary to take one step at a time observe what you're looking at and then recreate the color and the value of what you're looking at and then we'll look at what the technique we can use to make that work so let's see now I've got the uh, ultramarine blue now there okay that's the value pretty much uh, well actually so we've seen some of that a little bit darker but um, let's add we'll add just a touch of the darker ultramarine blue to it and just darken it a tiny bit uh, that is very close let's see yes that's very close to the value we need now all we need to do is to add the uh, yellow orange into it and and get the color of the green color we're seeing 
So I'll add the, that yellow orange is very close in value to this um, pile of blue I just mixed. So I'll just mix that together of the yellow orange. Did I add too much orange into it? We'll find out. So let's hold that right there. Right in there. Okay, that is really the green that we're seeing in here. Uh, we see, we're seeing a little bit darker version of that. So I'm going to get this... Um, I'm going to get just a little bit of off green blue over here and add directly to it the yellow orange. And let's come up with a darker version so that we'll have the ability to do that. Now you see, if you get these colors worked out, uh, it's pretty close. Well, it's, it's closer to this right here, which is okay. Not quite that dark yet, so I'll add a little bit more of the off green blue. If you get your colors worked out before you start then you know what you're doing. That is much preferable to just uh, the trial and error me trial and error method, where you're just reaching your brush into different colors to try to get it. If you get that worked out, you'll know what you did, and then bingo, you'll be able to do it. So once you have the colors worked out, that's bothering me. I bet it's bothering you folks too. That little bit of paint that I happen to hit. There we go, getting rid of most of that, just with the palette. Now, if you notice, it came off much easier. If I had used a paper towel for that, I would have just smeared it. Now, the next thing is to observe what color do you see first against this dark. Now, in this case, there's there there's a hill behind. It's more in shadow, and more light is catching what's going on right here. Now, here's where the alternation comes in. The alternation, we have the... Uh, you might call it the the red orange or yellow orange then we have green and then we have another stripe of kind of yellow orange and then we have the green and, and so on so we have layers there that alternate to yellow green uh, uh, red, yellow orange or orange let's just call it that to green to orange to green to orange to green and then it, it, if we start building in the distance um, here's a method that you you might find useful and you might put your own spin in it. This is not a remember how to. Uh, this is a way of using the brush to make that happen, but you might find your own, you, you're able to put your own spin on it. So because I, saw, I see yellow orange first, right back there, I'm going to pick up yellow orange, orange on the brush, but I'm not just going to stroke it, I'm going to push it in. Why? Because I see those strokes moving upward. Now, if you just look at your subject, and relate it to brush stroke. What brush stroke do I see? What I what brush stroke do I know that will make that appear the way it appears? A lot of times you can answer the question: Which way does the brush need to move, and how much? So um, we don't have the green right here, and somebody's going to tell me I would do a better demonstration if I put that dark green behind it. Never mind, I'm not going to do that. I just want to show you this. So if you just push the brush push it and move it across like that. You see what that does? With that kind of movement of the brush, you make that little, those little vertical patterns, the vertical textures that resemble these kinds of textures right here. Now if I move next, I'm not going to pull that color out of the brush. If I take that same brush and just load it on its tip, that's all I'm doing. Flat brush, by the way. Load it on, I'll load it on its tip, now I'm going to push this up into that. And watch just that little bit of variation, not much, and let it vary. Vary is your key there. Uh, it varies according to the how much it varies. You don't just go straight across with a streak of it, but let this guide you. Let what you see guide you. So you might it might even have some places where it skips. You might have some places where it doesn't go at all. And um, let me just now wipe the brush off and push some of this up like that into it. Just push. See, just by pushing it up in there then that has that feeling of grass growing. Now come back, alternation. Now come back now to this color. What I'm seeing happen like right in there. Come back to this, this, and this is alternation where I then allow that to push up into that layer like that. And I begin to see some variation. Now I see also there's probably a little more value variation than I actually see there, but I won't sweat that. And now, uh, now I'll come back. What do I see next? I see a larger patch of green. And maybe it's beginning to get just a little bit darker. Get that variation too. And with a larger patch of green, now that needs to be a little bit lighter. So we'll just get that green a little bit lighter. 
larger patch of green. There we go. You see like that. Now I'm beginning to get now the kind of variation that I'm seeing there. And again, not the same all the way across. I allow it to vary. Let's go back in here now. What am I seeing? I'm seeing thinner pieces of the orange on top of the green. So let's do this. Let's make a larger, greener area of the green portion. And again, I'm using this kind of stroke. You see, this is where, where I am right in here. Making this kind of stroke. Just pushing it up. Just the tip of the brush loaded. Not very much paint on it at all. Just pushing up. Now we'll come into the the orange. What we're seeing right in here. And put just a little bit of paint on the brush. And let's just push it right up into that. Like that. And we can get that pretty much the way we are observing it right here. The, the greater the push up in, then the more we have appearing. We can put a little bit more paint on, brush for where we, on the brush for, for where we see more of that, like that, that sort of thing. And see, now we can just continue that process. And you see that as it goes down, uh, it changes. It gets a little bit darker right in here, but in all the way down, and then you get down here, and this wasn't part of the problem. The person was asking about distant, getting variation in distant grasses without having to, without, where there are no trees or there are no twigs or anything to differentiate. But if you would just uh, follow that method of observing and preparing your, your colors for what you're seeing, and then allow your brush to imitate the movement of the thing that you're seeing, Describe the movement to yourself. First of all, are you seeing pretty much all the same color? But there's some variation in value. In that case, then you would have one one color, but you will have slight differences in value. But notice you don't see very much at all. But the important thing is that you observe what's happening in terms of value, in terms of color, and in terms of texture. Texture is it's what that is, are the, the, the variations that we see that interpret for us the fact that it's grass. So as I say so many times in these quick tips, when you change the way you see, change the way you observe, if you're, as long as you're calling it grass, it's not giving you any information at all. But if you switch your language, switch what you're looking for, look for what value are you looking at, how close are the values when they're different, how close are they together, what, the, what are the colors you're looking at, and what are you going to what we need to do in order to create those colors of whatever value they're in. Ask yourself those kinds of questions. That what are the textures you're looking at and what do you know, what do you know that your brush will do in order to give you those textures. When you observe with those kinds of questions, you'll be surprised you'll be able to paint most things that you're looking at. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel Click on the bell so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.